So good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, Thomas Grimm from Utrecht University. And Thomas will start uh, today's morning session with telling us something about tame geometries and QFTs and string theory. Uh, th well, thanks a lot. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for putting together this conference and uh, to inviting me to speak here. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is some exciting subject which I've been working on for the last uh, two, three years. And admittedly, it is not directly related to the, uh, to the main topic of this conference. However, I will touch out, uh, upon integrability towards the end of my talk. And what I hope to do with this talk is, uh, I hope to give you the, an understanding of at least what it means to use tame geometry in physics, in quantum field theory, and in string theory. And I hope that you will um, share a little bit of the excitement which comes from uh, this, uh, this discovery. It will be based on a number of papers. Well, in fact, it was inspired in this uh, first work, which is done together with uh, three uh, ma uh, pure mathematicians, uh, Ben Bakker, Christian Schnell, and Jakob uh, Zimmermann. And it kind of working on this, it led me to uh, suspect that kind of tameness is actually something which is omnipresent in physics. And this led to this conjecture here. And more recently, in an upcoming work, we actually show quite uh, remarkably, I think, that indeed uh, tame geometry is very useful in quantum field theory, right? In theories without supersymmetry in very general settings. And finally, I will uh, comment on some uh, work done in collaboration with my PhD student, uh, Jeroen Monet, who is also here in the audience. And this is kind of connecting this story into integrability uh, via, via Hodgson. Let me start with a very general introduction. Well, when we start to study uh, mathematics or physics, we realize quickly, at least from the experience from, from school, that mathematics is wild. Yeah. Especially when you learn analysis, we realize that t topologies and maps can be really involved. Uh, they are used as counter examples for all kinds of simple thoughts. And we re learn about complicated sets, for example, Cantor sets, which are kind of infinitely refining uh, sets. We learn about complicated functions. So mathematicians have no problems with these sort of functions, which are jumping at infinitely many places and so on. Or this function, which is kind of roughly depicted here, not really because it, it kind of gets infinitely dense infinitely many zeros. So this is what we learn in mathematics. And a common feature of this is that there's no proper uh, graphical representations. I mean, I can do something like this, but at the end of the day, I'm missing the main point of this function, namely these infinitely many accumulating zeros. Now, if you, di if you dive deep deeper into mathematics, namely you learn about logic, things get even more wild, right? Maybe you have learned about or heard about Gödel's first incompleteness theorem. And you learn about that statements are, can be undecidable, like fundamentally undecidable. You can neither prove them or disprove them within the axiom set. Yeah. That sounds very, very wild, and it was also shocking to mathematicians at the time, of course. And there's much work subsequently focused on this. But, but then. Once you learn this in, the, in your original lectures on, uh, say, analysis, you, 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 you start to study physics, and then this kind of fades out this information, right? And in fact, one has the feeling that physics must be more tame, 
right? It, can, it, it shouldn't be that crazy. This thing shouldn't be very physical, right? Yeah. Okay, that's a, it's a good feeling to have, and it's, uh, I think we all agree it's probably true, but what is, what is the proper uh, tameness principle? And in this talk, I want to tell you what could be such a proper tameness principle. Now, how did I come to think about this question? Obviously, well, I didn't sit down and look into analysis book and think, oh, this, there must be something interesting there. No, how did I come to this? Well, I actually uh, thought about uh, the number of effective theories or vacua which arise in string compactifications. Namely, there is a long-standing uh, question in string theory and string compactification Namely, is the number of distinct effective theories from string theory be below a fixed cutoff scale finite? Yeah. It was proposed long ago in the beginning of the 2000s uh, that, that this should be the case with some appropriate understanding of finite cutoff. And in fact, there has, much, has been much recent um, progress been made in this direction in the, in the context of the so-called Swampland program, which tries to kind of restrict all the theories which come from quantum gravity. Okay, and there have been a lot of works in this direction, and, and that's actually where our uh, mathematics paper is centered. So it actually answered one of these finiteness questions in a very specific, precise way. Namely, what we studied is we studied certain flux compactifications. I will say a few more words about this later on, with self-dual fluxes. And we actually prove a, a rather non-trivial theorem, namely that the, uh, there are only finitely many of these. And in fact, that kind of translated into more physical terms, that these, these scalar potentials which arise there have only finitely many minima. So, so this crazy wild function which, which I, I, I gave you on the first slide actually shouldn't appear because it has infinitely many minima. So, so, so a, finiteness, a, a finiteness criterion could be a nice uh, tameness criterion yeah? because it would rule out one of these uh, functions which I gave you before. But finiteness... Finiteness seems at first just a yes or no statement. Yeah? Something is finite or not. So it would be much nicer to have something structural, something which you can work with in, in your theory in general. Yeah? And therefore, uh, uh, one can be inspired by this proof of this finiteness theorem. And in fact, this proof of this finiteness theorem uses a very powerful mathematical machinery which is currently investigated uh, to a very large extent, namely uh, t uh, the so-called, well, you might want to call it tame geometry, yeah. or O-minimal geometry. So what do we observe? Well, we, with, this, with this kind of uh, approach, you then realize suddenly that in fact, that if you go through all the effective theories which we know from string compactification, that in fact, if you fix the energy scale, then using this tame geometry, you find that they have tame coupling functions, they have tame field spaces and parameter spaces. Yeah. So you just go through the examples and you just see this. Yeah, you can, it's sometimes really hard, and I will present some of these evidence. Then, if you look at quantum field theories, and you, you, you compute arbitrary loop amplitudes at fixed loop order, then you find that these expressions are actually tame functions. They are not as wild as you can imagine from your analysis course, but they are rather tame. And as thirdly, you also find some uh, uh, tameness results when you look into integrable models. So in fact, our, in our recent work, we connected some specific integrable models with, uh, with Hodge theory. And as we will see, tameness is kind of all over the place in Hodge theory. So actually, tameness also appears in integrable models in an intriguing way. So now, I, 
obviously I step by step have to introduce what I mean by, by all of these words. So the first thing which I should mention is what do I mean by we are talking about tame coupling functions. What, what do I mean by this? Well, let us look at an effective theory, some, some Lagrangian of this type, then it can have some scalar fields phi and then they might couple through a metric, right? They might live on a non-trivial field space and might couple through a metric like this. And this metric might depend on the fields themselves, so it could be a curved space, and it might depend on some parameters which I call lambda. Furthermore, you can have a gauge coupling function which depends on phi and some parameters, or you can have a scalar potential which depends on the fields phi and some parameters. So we, we have a parameter space called P and a scalar field space uh, called M, which can also depend on the parameters. Okay. So what is the kind of the setting? You have a parameter space and uh, field spaces and uh, and your effective theory changes over it depending on what kind of point I fix in these spaces, okay? And now you can imagine all kinds of th things what are parameters, the number of fields could be parameters or the vefs of some heavy fields or fluxes in the compactification, topological data of some manifold which is appearing in the compactification. So there are possibly discrete and infinitely many, yeah, in principle. So now what is the tameness statement? The tameness statement is that actually these field spaces and these parameter spaces and these coupling functions are not general functions and not sp general spaces, not general manifolds or something like this. But they are rather tame sets or tame functions. Okay? I will explain what tame means in a moment. But before doing that, let me let me let me already mention one key feature which we should keep in mind. I told you that we're talking about effective theories and there is a cutoff dependence. Yeah, so an effective theory depends on which cutoff I'm choosing. And now you could imagine that you just lower the cutoff. Yeah, you look, you say, oh, we, the, 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 the highest possible energy scales is, uh, is reduced now and then you have to integrate out heavy fields. And that means that you, you're kind of flowing to a new effective theory. Yeah? You have to introduce a new effective theory. And the basic question is, well, this effective theory could have fewer fields, but they could ha it could have much more complicated coupling functions because you have to integrate all of these out. Okay? So one key feature of this tameness story should be that it's preserved under lowering the cutoff. So in fact, it could be that you start with a theory which has uh, this modular, this field space which I depicted here in gray, but if I lower the energy scales, I actually locate, a, I, I locate myself into the vacua of the theory, and then I just get a discrete set, for example, or I might get some flat directions. Yeah? And in, in fact, this tameless observation says that, well, all of these effective theories which appear starting from a UV theory should remain tame. So, this, so this, 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 this tame geometry should have some very powerful features which preserve tameness uh, under lowering energy scales. Okay, so now, yes? Yeah, so the question is whether you can actually check this directly, starting with some Lagrangian with some functions, computing loop corrections, and seeing what kind of loop Feynman diagrams give you, what kind of functions, what kind of integrals, and then this question is decidable. Yes, exactly, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what we are, we are, we are doing. So we are f starting with the classical story, and then we, we have, we, but it's very non-trivial, right? Because you could imagine that all, that help like, breaks through in, 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 in quantum field theory, right? Because we have also very little mathematical deep understanding of quantum field theory. Okay, anyway, yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. So now let me, let, now after all this tameness talk, now I should finally tell you what tameness is. So uh, it, it, the, the name at least and, and the idea, the basic idea came from uh, uh, the work of Grotendieck 
uh, who, who actually wrote a grant proposal, which is a sketch of a, which is called sketch of a program. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a grant proposal to uh, go to the IHES, and uh, his idea was that much of the mathematics or the topology which is used is actually developed for people who do analysis, right? But we want to develop a topology which is usable or useful for people who do uh, geometry. Yeah? And that means you can draw things uh, in, in a rough term, uh, in rough term. So especially we want to remove pathology, uh, pathologies which occur in ordinary topology. In, in parallel and completely independently, there is a develop, was a debe development in logic, yeah, which discussed the theory of so-called O-minimal structures. This was developed in a part of logic which is called model theory. Okay. And it, uh, it, maybe you can trace its origin to the following question. You want to build a theory which, uh, which has only decidable story, uh, statements, okay? only decidable things. And then this means in order to avoid this Gödel incompleteness, you cannot do this over the integers. That's where this sort of undecidable comes from fundamentally. But you have to work over the real numbers. And in fact, already in the 40s, uh, uh, Tarski um, looked at a theories, uh, theories built from poly polynomial equalities and inequalities and then showed that these are only leading to decidable statements if you translate them into logical statements. Okay. And this is a very, at least uh, at first, a uh, uh, very simple setting. It's called semi-algebraic sets. And the important thing is that you need an ordering, right, in order to define inequalities. So, so this, as we will see, reappears because the O minimal structured means ordered minimal structure. So the ordering is central. Okay. And later on, uh, it was asked, what are the interesting extensions of these simple structures? And, th and the resulting picture was the introduction of O minimal structures. And they were shown when you translate their logic, their meaning in logic into geometry, that they define in, in fact, something very similar to what uh, Krotendieck envisioned, namely this tame topology. Yeah. In fact, you will see in a moment that they have strong finiteness properties. Yeah. They give a generalization of real algebraic uh, geometry. So it will not just be poly polynomials, very important, because physics is not just polynomials, as you will see. So it's really a generalization of real algebraic geometry. And if you want to learn a bit uh, about this, I very highly recommend the intro book, uh, introduction book by Van den Dries. And of course, if you are, since you are here in Berlin, or we are here in Berlin, some of you are local, one of the world experts actually here, uh, Bruno Klingler, in the math department, working on O-minimal structures and Hodge theory. Yeah. So they are also nowadays you can find everything online. So they are very good YouTube lectures by these uh, uh, authors, by these mathematicians. Okay. So what is the basic idea? The basic idea is to specify a collection of sets, which we call tame sets, and allowed functions, which are called tame functions, and these sets are subsets of R n, and the functions are f going to from R n to R m. Yeah. And once you have this, you can use this as a starting point to build a tame geometry. And then you have transition functions on manifolds, which you can make tame and so on. And you can build tame manifolds, tame bundles, and so on. So you, if you can just develop a whole tame geometry. In a first step is we have to say, what are now these tame sets? So they first have to define a structure. So what is a structure? It's a structure is a, it's a, it's a, a construct where you say, what are the properties of the sets within this collection of sets? And in particular, you want them to be closed under finite 
I made this blue. Finiteness is very important. They should be closed under finite unions, intersection, complements, and products. So take two tame sets, intersect them, right? On their overlap, it should be again a tame set. One crucial property is crucial property is it should be closed under projections. So what happens if you take your uh, any set, take a higher dimensional set, and then you project it down to uh, a lower dimensional set, kind of a line, say? Then the the linear projection towards this set should be again in this structure should be again tame. And in, in, in logic, this would be the ex existential symbol. And in order to make this set sufficiently rich or kind of extend what this tasky construction of uh, uh, kind of just using polynomials, we require to make it non-trivial that all po solutions to polynomials equations are included from the start. Okay? So it's already quite a rich structure. And now comes the question, so what is now tameness? The tameness is actually not part of this. The tameness is actually just this simple assumption, namely that if you project or if you look at the sets of R of, R, of the real line, R1, then the only tame sets in this, uh, in this R are finite unions of intervals and points. These intervals can be infinitely long, but that's it. Yeah? Finite unions of points or intervals. So now, how does this tameness kind of go to higher dimension? It goes to higher dimension because we demand that everything is closed under these projections. So if you project down to the real line, everything has to go to one of these sets here. Every higher dimension set has to project down to this one of these sets. Okay. Now, how do we, how we are we in time? Okay. So now, what are tame functions? Tame functions are those whose graph is tame. So just take a function like a, a polynomial function. And then if this graph of this function defines a tame set, then this is a tame function. Okay. So now I give you an example and a non-example. One of the examples is a polynomial function. So the graph of the function is just this. I take a simple polynomial, and this you, you, is, is by definition a tame set. Yeah. And in fact, you also see that if you project it down to a, the real line, to any real line, you get only finitely many points and intervals. Yeah, so it's, it's even, it's, it's totally uh, consistent within the structure. A non-example is the sine function for x on the real line. In fact, you see immediately that if you project down to the real line, it has infinitely many uh, zeros. Ah, no, no, I mean restriction, so just a linear projection. So it has infinitely many zeros, it is infinitely minima and maxima and so on. Yeah? This is not a tame set, it's never a tame set. Whatever you do, whatever structure you pick, tame structure you pick is never a tame function. Yes, that's pretty. Yes. Exactly. So it's tr uh, so you can have exactly two points of view on this. So the first thing is you oh find it, oh you were ruling out the sine function which appears everywhere in physics. That's wild. Yeah, uh, that's not good. Let's put it like this. Yeah. On the other hand, you have uh, as we will see in a moment, there is a way of repairing this, namely if you say that actually the periodicity is actually something which is non-physical, then uh, you can uh, resolve this and you can show that. If you restrict the period, it becomes a tame function if you put the right tame structure. Okay. Please be patient for a few more minutes and you will see. 
Now, there is a theorem. Uh, it's a fundamental theorem. It's not too complicated to prove in tame geometry. So what does a tame function look like in one variable? Function, uh, a function from R to R, yeah? You can show that any tame function is of the following form. You can split the domain into finite number of intervals. And within these finite number of intervals, the function is uh, monotonic and continuous. It can jump, but it can jump only at finitely many places. So it can have finitely many dis discontinuities. In fact, you can show all kinds of uh, corollaries to this. So one thing is that it has only finitely many minima and maxima if it's differentiable. Yeah. More interesting is you realize since you can always, you can always uh, cut the domain into finitely many intervals, there will be always a last interval, namely the interval which goes to infinity. Yeah? And along this infinitely long interval, not much can happen. It has to be monotonic along this. So there has to be an, a tail to infinity which is rather uh, well-behaved. Yeah, which has a very tame behavior. Okay, that's uh, one uh, result. And now, and, and unfortunately, this is one of the few places where you see the power of tameness. Uh, we just will observe uh, tameness mostly in this talk, but it's very powerful. So once you have tameness and you combine it with something else, oh, I should have written uh, tame here. If a function is tame, plus holomorphic, then it's actually a polynomial. So it's not just, uh, tameness is not just some uh, <laughs> uh, a kind of a, a nice observation which is not useful. In fact, it's very powerful if you combine it with other properties like analyticity. And here you see this very, uh, rem very remarkably. Uh, so note, there is not a unique choice of an O-minimal structure. Yeah. Ex, ex, uh, ex, actu actually, much of the early work on this uh, in the end of the 90s, and many, many of the deep theorems proved in this uh, subject, are about constructing such tame, stru uh, such tame, uh, tame structures. And this is very non-trivial. It's done by logicians, and uh, don't ask me how these uh, proofs work. But uh, the basic idea is to, to construct these sets by stating which functions are allowed to generate the sets. And that's very non-trivial to pick the function. So what are the important examples? Well, the first one is the, the simplest one, namely the one which is just generated by real polynomials. Okay? So you take a polynomial equation and put them equal to zero in n variables. And then because of this projection property, you also get all the inequalities. And if you collect all these sets, this is a tame structure. This is the smallest tame structure, yeah, or minimal structure. Now, there is one, and that was kind of a, a big breakthrough in the 90s uh, by Wilkie, that actually it's not just about polynomials. Actually, you can add transcendental functions, like the exponential function to the story and it still preserves tameness. And this, is, this, is a, uh, this is remarkable and very useful for us. So if I would have told you that, uh, that the exponential function is not tame and we see it all over the place in physics, uh, you, you, would, you would have discarded this immediately, okay? So we are fine with the sign, uh, with infinite sign, but with the exponential we need it. Just think about instant on corrections. So this is a tame structure, but there is an even bigger tame structure. So note that the game is now to make the structure as big as possible, to include as many as possible sets while still preserving these finiteness properties. Yeah? And that's the non-trivial task. And in fact, what you can also add is restricted real analytic functions. So take a function which is uh, uh, analytic, and restrict it to a smaller set, to say a smaller interval, and use it to generate your sets. And this is 
an O minimal structure, a tame structure called R unexp, just a name. Yeah, un means analytic or restricted analytic, x means that the exponential function is included. So how do the sets look like? Well, they are generated by finitely many equalities and inequalities, which contains polynomials, so these are polynomials, and they, this, you can use the exponential function and you can use any restricted analytic function. So why is this structure so important? Yeah, so in, t in fact, this will be the most important structure. It will be uh, the most important structure because it is this structure which makes the complex exponential into a tame function if you restrict the angle. Yeah, so you have to actually restrict because otherwise you have the sine and the cosine which would be have infinitely many zeros. But if you restrict this uh, phi to a finite interval, then it's a restricted analytic function. Cosine and sine are analytic. And then if you restrict it, then it's a restricted analytic. So you need these parts. And the exponential you need, obviously, because there's the exponential here. Can c be equal to 2 pi plus? Sure. Why, why, do, why do you say that? I mean, for, uh, I mean, you mean in applications, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, you, in principle, you need much more, right? Because this set is huge, right? You have to, we know that in physics, not only cosine and sine appear in some, so, 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 if you compute a Feynman integral, they have very complicated functions, some hypergeometric functions appearing. And you, ha you, you need more structure than just this. If you put the, C, the bigger C, you recover or more structure? No, 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 no. no. Why do consider just two parts? No, you, ha you can do that for an example, but it doesn't, uh, yeah. yeah. No, you have to include all the possible Cs, and this is the... Okay, but so now th there are also functions which are not tame and which you know from, from, from your everyday experience. So first of all, the gamma function is not tame. A uh, gamma function, if you look at the interval from zero to infinity, it's not tame. You don't see that, but it's true, okay? The zeta function is not tame. The error function is not tame. So there are non-tame functions which are not in this structure, okay? Okay, very good. Now, there is much more to say. There is a higher dimensional story. There are many theorems in higher dimensions which are very deep. The point, what I want to make that is, tameness is used as a property, right? You show tameness and then you combine it with something else in many recent proofs of deep mathematical conjectures. I, I just list some here. Uh, feel free to look into the literature. It's all, it's, these are very recent works I, I didn't put the publishing date, so this is not even in the journal yet, but they are very recent works. So it's a very active field connecting logic, number theory, and geometry. So how is tameness at work in, in simple physical settings? Well, first of all, let me quickly explain uh, what happens if you lower a cutoff. Let's now imagine that I have a field space which is a tame manifold and the potential which is tame. Then if I integrate out classically heavy fields, then I get a differential a kind of this constraint, restricting to the minima. And I have, since this is a tame function, you can show that its derivative is a tame function and the intersection of two tame sets is by definition a tame set, that's part of the structure. And therefore the vacuum manifold is also tame, yes. Now let us assert that the field space is a tame manifold. So this is an assertion here. Okay, and then if you restrict to the VEFs, it's also tameness is preserved because this projection property, because of this return. So tameness is classically preserved when lowering the cutoff, and now what is happening when you go to the quantum level? Now, it, if you make this assumption, already things are starting to be ruled out, right? For example, uh, it, my assumption that the potential is tame 
rules out such potentials which put your minimum into like an infinite spiral. Yeah. So th this, this is not a tame potential when you kind of can infinitely spiral. And you see, well, if you make a linear projection, it has ma infinitely many uh, minima. Another th example is there are infinitely many va vacuo compatible with, uh, with you can never have infinitely many vacuo compatible with tameness. Yeah? So there are some string theory settings uh, where, which you can immediately think, oh, there must be some sort of cutoff where the theory breaks down. So many functions do not appear, as partic particularly the function which I showed you in the very beginning with this kind of highly oscillatory um, behavior. And this was discussed in the early 2000s, and, and, and then people actually, uh, these authors actually try to argue, well, maybe we should count these vacua as being the same vacua that you can tunnel between them. No, if tameness is true, you just can't, this does not exist, this does not happen in the theory of quantum gravity. Yes? So this, uh, this gives this restricted setup? Oh, sorry, I can't say this restriction area where they lost the rows. Because then you would have to cut this off and it would be fixed by the Yeah, as soon as you, well, but, but this is really go when you go to, to, to zero. Yeah. So you, if you cut it off, fine. Then, of course, it, these, are, these are tame potentials. So really, if you go to infinity. But this does not use the, like, Sorry. So this does not use the, the you have these various function space that you looked at. This uses one of the uh, exponential ones. No, no, no. It, it's, it's true in all of them. It's, it's generally true. So I mean, if you look at this, say, go phi going to zero, then actually you're probing the infinite line, right? Phi going to zero goes to infinity. So it's the sign of you, you get infinitely many minima. And this is never tame in any structure. So then, then I probably didn't understand this restricted thing that you, that you did because there you, it, it seemed like you can restrict to any part of your... So, so it's always a combination on what is the manifold your function is defined on. If I look at the function on R, then this function, uh, or here it's even the interval, right, from zero to pi, or from zero to c, then actually had infinitely minima because there's this accumulation point. Oh, so you can only restrict in the complex plane, you never restrict. No, but the problem is that sine of phi to the minus one is not a, 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 an analytic function mm, mm. Uh, which you can restrict to this interval. On this interval, it's not analytic, Rest not restricted analytic. Mm. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, I'm probably missing a point. So if you take a string theory, you compactify it somewhere, you claim that such potential never appear? Yes. Mm -hmm. You're n not missing the point, yes. I will show you why, uh, indeed why. Yes. So you, you said a few times that you don't like the sine function. It's fine. But I'm, I'm quite happy giving the sine function as a quantum mechanics problem and finding a back you know, a gap, band gap. Mm -hmm. So w what are we saying here, that we shouldn't do no, uh, I condensed I mean matter as an effective theory, or? No, well, it depends on, you have to understand this models uh, uh, pre precisely. Uh, so, so first, you have to understand the, si we will come to this, like the sine Gordon model or something like this, right? You have to say that whether or not your field actually lives on the real line, or if you kind of look at configurations which are just on a restricted interval. So the, so the non-decider, sorry, but now I switched to, the non-tameness comes from the fact that you're looking at it at the real line. If you have some sort of cutoff to this, then it's fine. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not anti-sign, yeah? so I'm fine with the sign function as long as it lives on an inter, exactly. And I think this is, by the way, what one does in practice in physics all the time. So you will see that, that much of this feels very natural if you think about this. But this gives kind of a mathematical formulation of this, and then you can use it. Okay. So then there was some, some uh, fun paper appearing which, which invented a QFT with a scalar potential which has its undecidable statements. So you were not able to decide whether the theory break Preserve supersymmetry or break supersymmetry? Well, if you look at it, the scalar potential which appears there is not tame. 
Yeah, this ties into this connection with logic and decidability. Okay, now I should, uh, how do I do with time? Uh, I, I should hurry up a bit. Um, so I should tell you now evidence of tameness. It's very important to explain you the structure probably other, properly, otherwise it's just words. So we lost quite some time. Uh, so let's uh, look at some evidence from string theory. So the first thing is, let's look at theories which have a lot of supersymmetry. Scalar field spaces, which are these coset spaces. Yeah. So if you have a lot of supersymmetry, the scalar, well, a lot, I mean bigger than two in, in, in four dimensions, then the, coset, then the scalar field space is this coset space. Of course, we have heard this in this uh, conference before where gamma is some discrete symmetry group that is gauged. Yeah, so it's divided out, so it's not, it's gauged. Okay. We call it coset space. In mathematics, you would call it uh, arithmetic quotients if this gamma is an arithmetic, arithmetic group. So, in, uh, uh, in fact, it was recently shown in the seminal paper that these, these scalar field spaces actually admit uh, a tame structure. So they are actually tame manifolds. What does that mean? That means that you can cover them by finitely many charts, okay? And that all the transitions function from one chart to the other are in fact tame functions, okay? In fact, they are already tame in this structure R alg, so in the, in the polynomial structure. Uh, it's maybe not too surprising. So in higher supersymmetric theories, you don't have instant on corrections, you don't need the exponential function, okay? So they are tame in this structure if this gamma, this discrete group is sufficiently large, yeah? And this was shown in this seminal paper. In fact, they construct the, uh, the charts explicitly, which are uh, known as Siegel sets. Now, what about the coupling functions? The coupling functions are now, for example, the metric on these manifolds and so on. And in fact, you can also show, that's what we will do at the gauge coupling function, that there are tame functions in this, in this RL structure. Now, is this a general, so now the field spaces and the coupling function at two derivative level in this higher supersymmetric theories are tame. This is, no, these are non-trivial results, by the way, so it's not, these are not obvious, these, by no means, these theorems. And the, uh, and the, uh, the remaining question is, uh, are the parameter spaces tame? Yeah, what are the parameter spaces? Well, the spectrum and the gauge groups, for example. And now you have to show that they are finite when they, when they come from a quantum gravity theory. So that's where really supergravity uh, is different from, uh, from a theory which comes from string theory. In supergravity, you can construct infinitely many groups. Yeah, you can just put more and more vector multiplets, for example. But in string theory, this seems to be not possible. And that's what these papers talk about, which I cited in the very beginning. They tell you, you can never uh, get one million vector multiplets. Well, excuse me, do you suppose it, or this is just inherent feature of string theory, that it, uh, it's string theory is like that? That it never appears. No, th that, that's what the evidence from string theory shows, what these papers uh, try to show. So they try to find argument why there are cutoffs at the number of vector multiplets, for example, which you can get from a string any string compactification. There's a lot of effort focusing on this. Yeah. Uh, and then if this is true, then, then tameness also of the parameter space can be true. So because infinite discrete things in, are never tame. Yeah, that's what what was the point in this one dimension set. Okay, so that's the setting under higher supersymmetric. So now let's go to lesser supersymmetry. Uh, Calabi-Yau compactifications. If you look at Calabi-Yau compactification, you get n equals two theories in four dimensions. And we can compute the Keller metric, uh, the metric on the moduli space, and the gauge coupling function. And the important fact is, that they are all derived from one underlying set of functions which are so-called period integrals. What are period integrals? Period integrals are the integrals over the three zero form in, in Calabria three folds, uh, and they are very non-trivial transcendental functions 
of the complex structure moduli. Okay. Now, how can this possibly be tame? Well, we have to use another uh, uh, remarkable result from this, uh, from this recent paper. Namely, this paper shows that actually all of these period integrals are tame functions. Yeah. Or at least the period map are tame, and then you can even show that the period integrals themselves are tame. In fact, now you need this whole structure. So you really need the exponential, obviously, there are instant on corrections or exponential corrections. And there you need the restricted analytic because there are cosines, there are hypergeometric functions, there's really complicated functions appearing there. So we see that tameness is preserved in this case. There might be, again, parameters. And if you want to show that the parameter space is uh, tame, you need to show that there are only finitely many choices for this parameter. One important uh, uh, thing you would need is, for example, you would need the finiteness of Calabi-Yau manifolds, which is claimed to be true, compact Calabi-Yau manifolds. OK, now, so far I only told you examples where coupling functions are tame and where field spaces are tame. But you can show even, and that's what this uh, our our general theorem is about, you can even show that parameter spaces can be tame or have to be tame when they come from string theory. If we look at these flux compactifications, which are really well understood, with, which have these vacuum condition, you can show that the scalar potential is a tame function. So it has only finitely many minima if you fix the flux. But if you keep G4, the flux, as a parameter, you first think, oh my. Now, oh my god, I now lose tameness because this is an infinite discrete thing. It lives on the lattice. It's the worst thing for tameness. But there is the tadpole condition which re rescues you, which is kind of a global consistency condition for a compactification. And then, in fact, you find that if you take this into account, tameness is restored, so even as a function of these discrete parameters, if you restrict them by the and this is a generalization of parts of a very famous theorem on so-called Hodge classes. Now, in the last few minutes, let me give you some uh, evidence from quantum field theory. So this is something very exciting, uh, which I'm very excited about at the moment. Namely, if you look at a general L-loop amplitude in a quantum field theory, which is, let's say, it's renormalizable, then that amplitude I can think of as a map from the space of momenta and the parameters are masses and vertices. And what we show is that these maps are actually tame functions. So now, while, while, while these, uh, these period integrals were holomorphic, so you could all say, oh, this is, has something to do with holomorphicity and so on. This, these are real functions. These are general real functions. And what one shows is that they are also still definable uh, or still tame in this space. So how does this work? So one, one, way, uh, one important fact is that every Feynman, every amplitude can be composed of finitely many Feynman diagrams. And then every Feynman diagram can be built from finitely many master integrals. So you need quite some heavy results from uh, Feynman amplitudes. And then you have to sh use the fact that these Feynman integrals, these master integrals, can be related to period integrals. So this is always our main uh, uh, tool. So you construct an auxiliary geometry, and you show that these Feynman integrals are actually uh, appearing as uh, period integrals in this auxiliary compact geometry. So I, I have, don't have time. I'm anyway late already. I refer you to a book by uh, Weinziel, for example. This is something which is studied by many people working on Feynman amplitudes on the mathematical side. And so uh, there's a lot of literature on this. Now, we can use the fact that period integrals have recently been shown to be tame by themselves. And therefore, also, we can use then the projection property to say that the uh, Feynman amplitudes, that these loop amplitudes are tame. Yeah. 
Well, if you go to the non-perturbative level, our sine function or cosine function comes into the game again, you have instant on correction. So what, what do I do with this? So now we have periodic things. Well, if I use this periodicity as a gauge symmetry, then you, I can save this. And this is exactly what happened here in these, in these coset spaces. So if this gamma is sufficiently large, if you mod out this symmetry, this discrete symmetry group, then these functions can be tame. So the sine function, if you just restrict it to the interval, is tame. And this is related to the idea that in a quantum gravity theory, you don't have global symmetries. Yeah? So discrete global symmetries should be here. Now, that's not the end of the story. We actually try to check now. We, what we did is we looked through the literature wherever we found results about non-perturbative results about quantum field theory. We checked if there is tameness. And, and, and in fact, uh, these are few examples. So in zero dimensions, we found sine Gordon that this can be related to periods. It's tame. We, in these uh, 2D theories, in 2D string theories. And admittedly, where does our power come from? We usually relate things to period integrals. And even in integrabilities, that's something important to, uh, very powerful to do. Yeah. That's where we get this from, because tameness is not easy to check by any means. Yeah. So you, if I look at the function, you cannot easily see if it is tame or not. You can see if it is non-tame, if there are infinitely many zeros, for example. And finally, in the last uh, three minutes, I wanted to tell you a little bit evidence from this uh, uh, deformed Vesemino uh, Witten model. So I can skip this. So you start with a Vesemino Witten model, and you gauge the, di the, the diagonal uh, subgroup, which is this G over G model. And then uh, uh, there was, uh, I think in 2014 or something, like uh, by, by Svetzer, so kind of a deformation introduced, which turns in this into a much more interesting model because it has a non trivial, uh, can have a non trivial field type, one of these uh, deformations. And then it's still an integrable model with uh, some classical conformal symmetry. And here are its equations of motions if you rewrite them in an appropriate form. And what I'm now claiming is that, that also the, the solution, or at least a certain set of these solutions, are in fact tame. Yeah? So the, the, the solutions are actually tame. Now, the solutions can be horribly complicated. So how can we possibly see that they are tame? Well, we again relate them to periods. So we la relate them to this, uh, to this deep theorems. And how do we do that? We take an ansatz for G uh, and uh, A, where Q is some complex Lie algebra element. And if we consider this Lie algebra element to be of this type, namely that it bars to minus itself, and I pick beta of this form, then G is actually real. Yeah, it's element of the real uh, group G. And then I can interpret the solutions to this deformed uh, sigma model as coming from an auxiliary, an auxiliary variations of Hodge, variation of Hodge structure, an auxiliary Hodge structure. So in fact, such an operator would be called in mathematics a grading operator. Okay? And it splits your vector space, some auxiliary vector space, into eigenspaces. Okay? And this is exactly what one calls a Hodge decomposition in mathematics. So the solutions to the sigma model are actually uh, uh, of this type. They are actually given by Hodge decompositions. I'm not sure. I don't think all of the solutions. Yeah. But I will come to this in a moment. OK. Now, what is actually this G in this case? Well, it's actually the Hodge star operator on this auxiliary uh, uh, geometry. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty remarkable that in this setting, then, we are now back to the geometric setting. We, we, we used in all of these string compactifications. 
So now do the solutions correspond to a variation of, Ho of Hodge structure, then it would, they would be period maps. And in fact, uh, you can check that and you see that if I pick the parameters in this way, in fact, there are good reasons for picking them th this way, then they are indeed defining a variation on ho Hodge structure. This is technically more involved. Jeroen is around, please, uh, please ask him questions uh, if you're interested, okay? So I, there's a, a lot of technical stuff here. In fact, you find that exactly the equations of mo motions reduce to the equations of which define a variations of Hodge structure. So in other words, the sigma model, the solutions if you supply boundary conditions, in fact, through the mono monotony, you find that they are uh, in fact, um, these uh, period maps. So the solutions are period maps and the period maps are taken. And yes. As, as far as we understand, yes. At the moment, yes, but I will come to this in a moment. So the solutions are period maps and now we are in a set of 50 years of heavy mathematics and results, which you can all use yeah, to study the solutions to the setting. And in fact, for example, you can look at asymptotic solutions near, near punctures, and they tell you a formalism how to get them. Very, very non-trivial, but can be done in explicit examples. There are infinite recursion relations, which can be solved by the ingenious of these uh, mathematicians. Very famous paper, actually. And there is also a classification of all possible uh, solutions, or all possible type of such things. This is more recent, okay? Now, how far can we develop this? And now, the, now it comes to the question which I just asked two times, namely, are the other de deformations uh, also part of this? Well, my feeling is that we are, we are just at the tip of the iceberg. In fact, we are just talking about Hodge structure, but there is a huge field of mixed Hodge structures which has more degrees of freedom. And I suspect that many more of these integrable models or solutions to these integrable models are actually what is called mixed period maps. And then you can use the map. So this brings me to the end. Uh, it leads me to say that there uh, is a natural tameness conjecture that in fact, uh, scalar field spaces, parameter space, and coupling functions in any theory which comes out of quantum gravity are actually tame. It's a bold conjecture, but maybe, maybe it's true. I didn't find a counter example yet. And uh, my conclusion, I leave them to here for for, for you, I think it's amazing to see that one finally has a structure or a potential structure for the real world. And with real world, I mean not so closely tied to holomorphicity or something, but still can lead you to interesting result. And uh, it appears in quantum field theory, it appears in, in some relations to integrability, and it has even connection to some other of these recent conjectures about uh, theories from quantum gravity. Thank you and sorry for running over time a little bit. Yeah, thank you, Thomas, for the nice talk. So we, we still have time for a few questions. It's just a question, the mathematician working on the variation of hot structure, uh, they knew that the equations are integrable? Yes. Yeah, they knew it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know about the history about all of these things. So my feeling is that in these mathematics papers, so then the Nam's equation appears. They realized that Nam's equation comes out uh, in, this, in this 80, now even in the 70 something paper by, Sch by Schmidt. So they realized that this equation come out and then there was this development by Hitchin at the same time. Uh, but you have to realize that they really develop in these works very nicely usable formalisms to, to solve this. Maybe this is something which appears in physics in a ne different reincarnation, but I'm not sure about this. So this kind of infinite iteration to solve these equations is pretty remarkable. And if you do it once, it's, it's amazing that it works out. And it works for any group, so it's completely general. It's not what, one sometimes does in physics, you start with SU2 or your favorite group. They tell you using group theory, it's all group theory <laughs> and, and some heavy linear algebra. They tell you how to decompose these groups and how to reduce these things. And it's, 
it's one we spend a lot of time on this paper, and it's very fun to, to read them because you realize they're very computational. They're not like papers about categories or something like this. They're like things which you can actually, uh, I don't want to dis categories, but uh, you, can, uh, you can actually compute things using this. Okay. Uh, just a opening of speculation. How powerful is tameness in the sense Polymorphicity, we know, is extremely powerful. Think of cyborg witten theory, which presumably is tame because there's period integrals. Is there constraints that you can put on potentials through tameness in the same, same sort of way? Yep. Yeah, so the, remar the remarkable thing is, and I, 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 I've hidden this because, of course, that's something very uh, uh, exciting, but I don't have much to say about yet. Tameness becomes very powerful if you combine it, say, with analyticity. So you, so you could, uh, you, can, you can hope that if you combine it, so, so say you have some Feynman integrals and you have that they are tame. If you combine this with the, f and that's what these mathematicians are actually after, is if you combine that with uh, 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 analyticity, then you can find new algebraic relations. So, so so, so it's, actually, it's actually very powerful. And, 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 and much of the, when you talk about cyber equipment theory, what the people doing Hodge theory realized is that with this kind of connection to tameness, you get this behavior near the singularities. This is actually a tame behavior, and this tame behavior is actually so restrictive that it already tells you what precisely can happen to some extent. So if you hear some of the talks also by my collaborators, they say like, oh, many of these local theorems which tell you what happens when you go, say, to the uh, monopole or, in, or in, in, in conifold points, say, is actually captured by the fact that these periods are tame or the cyber quitting periods are tame. And, Is there any extra structure in this tameness uh, field which is not necessary for physics? So is there something that we could further restrict and r reduce tameness? Ah, yeah, that's a good question. So what I'm not sure is what is the, you can ask a, a, a valid uh, question is, what is the right tame structure to use? Should I go as big as possible? So should I use the biggest tame structure which, which, which you possibly can construct, which is met maybe not even known. Yeah? So, so I used always this R on exp, which has the exponential function and the restricted analytic. But they are more sophisticated structures. And maybe in physics, actually, you have to, maybe you have to pick a very clever tame structure, which, then, uh, which is then the suitable for your setting. So, so indeed, there could be something which is too much, which you have to restrict away, in the most general structure. R related to your point about tameness on non perturbative level, so in four dimensions we have kind of unique source of functions which come from localization. In particular, all sorts of Bessel functions. Some Bessel functions are probably not tame. Yes, that's true. Uh, but in general, it would be interesting to yes. check that. Yeah. So just matrix models. Right. On yeah. Which yeah. So partly we we look at this. So in in particular, like if you if you have a tame potential and you have localization, then you 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 you, you can hope that tameness is also preserved for the petition function. So that's an argument which we, which we will present. And uh, uh, we look at a few examples. Uh, Mike, of course, knows these, these settings very well. So we, we dig through the literature. Unfortunately, it's not from the mathematics side. If I give you some Bessel function, for example, for this uh, zero-dimensional uh, phi to the four theory, there's also, I think, a Bessel function coming out. And we don't, it has the right asymptotic to be tame, but we, we cannot prove that it's tame. That's why I wrote likely. So indeed, there are Bessel functions which are periodic, and they cannot be tame, but the, all the things which we checked actually turn out to be the ones which have this nice asymptotic. By the way, it's also the asymptotic which you have in string theory, like in these kind of 
exponentially falling off asymptotics of, uh, of Veneziano uh, amplitudes and so on. It's, it's very curious. And even there, I cannot answer the question whether or not this is a tame function. I'm, re I'm repeating another question which I got before. Are uh, string amplitudes tame? I, I cannot answer this. So, so this is the tricky thing. As don't throw a function at me and ask me if it is tame, because it can be really complicated to say yes or no, yeah. like with the Bessel function. Okay. Yes. So uh, if I understood it correctly, so indirectly you define something like tame manifold and tame Riemannian structure. And so this structure is somehow friendly that, for example, if you calculate the Ricci scalar, it is bounded or something like that. Or so, so in tame geometry, in tame differential geometry, there's a, they have, there are very well-known papers about uh, the boundedness of gradients. So, uh, and and that's why. Uh, so, so, yeah. So basically, yes. Basically, yeah. basically, there are some results on this. Yeah. Yes, of course. I have to tell you more details, but that's also one of the reasons why this is a all minimal structure are popular in machine learning, for example. So you can ask in machine learning, what are good functions as activation function? And then tame functions are a good set of functions because they have certain nice uh, properties, uh, kind of convergence properties also of these gradients, so steep descent and so on. Don't fully understand that, but I've seen a lot of uh, interest in these kind of uh, inequalities. Uh, I don't know the name of this in Kodoika inequalities. These are very uh, well-known inequalities. Okay, Thomas, thank you very much again. Uh, so there was another question. But oh, there's, there's another question. Oh, yeah. is, it, is it all right, just quickly. Is there some connection between the functions that are appearing and uh, the functions that appear in Borel reasonability and resurgence? It looks similar. I mean, there are some. Yeah, 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 I know. Yes, so this is this is something which we started to read only recently. It it looks very intriguing. I fully agree on this. So in so in uh, yeah, I cannot say yes or no, but it seems very intriguing to think about it this way. Okay, thanks again, and we will have. <laughs>